What's going on? No, like, what's, what's up, man? What's going on, man? What's going on, y'all? How y'all feel today? That's tomorrow, and that is it for us today. And we will leave you with a. I can't do it. We'll do it live. Okay. We'll do it live. Fuck it. Do it live. Uh, I hold can on. I'll write it, and we'll do it live. And thing sucks. There we go. Five, four, three. All right, there we go. There we go. We trying to, we trying to get something right. You know what I'm saying? We trying to do this uh, simulcast. I'm trying to do this like this all the time for you guys, so that you guys could participate. You see what I'm saying? Participate in this interview. Well, welcome to the Lockout Men Podcast Show. I am your humble host, Lockout Men. Thank you, thank you. And today I have another podcast interview for you guys. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to LOM community that's uh, coming in, chopping it up. I hope you guys enjoyed the uh, the other interview with Ashlyn Davis today, man. A lot of, a lot of. A lot of heavy comments in there. A couple of them had to be deleted, but still, I appreciate you guys uh, coming in and joining. Well, right now, today, I want to bring a trucking couple to the show. They uh, they just started. They just started, and as a matter of fact, they just called me last week. So this, you know, they've been subscribed to them. So I appreciate you subscribing to them. Uh. They married eight years, and like I said, they just started trucking. So we're going to bring to the show, We Be Trucking. Oops, there we go. That's what you do everything live. You do it like that. We Be Trucking. What's going on, Ivan and Sharice? Sharice, is it Sharice or Sharice? Sharif, Sharif, you got it right. What's Sharif. up, Lockout, man? What's up, What's with up? It, Ivan? What's going on, Sharif? How you guys been doing today? Where y'all, for, before you, we get started, where you guys at right quick? Where, where you, What part of the world y'all in? We in somewhere, somewhere in Kansas. <laughs> <laughs> My man said, y'all, yeah, yeah. y'all somewhere in Kansas. Have you, this, yeah. let, let me go ahead and get a background between y'all two. So, uh, I already know that you guys been married for eight years, but uh, where where are y'all from? We're originally from the Louisville, man, from St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, we currently, uh, you know, live in uh, H Town. You know, we got family down there, so we transitioned down there uh, because of job opportunities, whatever. I got offered something, so that's why we down there. But we're originally from the Loop, for sure. All right, all right, both of y'all, both both of y'all from the Loop. Yeah. Yep. Oh, okay, yeah. okay, okay. That's what's yeah. up, Louisiana. Okay. Uh, and now you currently... Did you res- say Louisiana? Huh? Did you say Louisiana? Because you said St. Louis. No, I said Lou. <laughs> oh, I probably did say Louisiana. Oh, okay. my, my bad, my bad. I St. Louis, right? <laughs> sometimes they, sometimes people get the Lou messed up with Louisiana and, and uh, St. Louis. You gotta, you gotta be like, yo, it's the one with the yeah. arch. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's the one with yeah. the arch. So, so yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. So, all right. So, married couple, eight years. What, what you guys been doing? What, what was life like uh, before y'all got into trucking? What, what you guys was doing before y'all, y'all jumped into it? Well, my background um, is in viral communication. Mm-hmm. I was working for one of the um, larger cell phone companies um, in operations, and uh, I did that for more than 10 years, and I got laid off. <clears throat> so that's when we decided um, to look elsewhere outside of St. Louis for job opportunities. And Houston has always had a special place in our heart. So when I got that nice uh, severance check, we decided to go ahead and make that a reality living down in Houston. That's my spot, man. That's my shit. 
Houston, when you said that it got a special place in your heart, Houston definitely got a special place in my heart. You know, I got love for Houston. I got love for everybody down in Texas. Majority of my subscribers is from uh is from Houston, Texas. So definitely shout out to Houston. Yeah. Chopped and screwed everybody down there. You know what I'm saying? Oh, they, they uh they they rock with me already. Already. What about you, yeah. Ivan? Where yeah. where where you yeah. come from? Man, you know, like I said, we we from the loop from St. Louis, man. Uh made that transition with my wife as well but i'm i'm a retired uh homicide uh detective and i became chief police back in the loop uh a couple years ago a few years ago and uh, i got a job opportunity for um uh, with some companies down there for uh, to be a cyber security manager so that 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 didn't pan out because uh we ended up moving down there then hurricane harvey happened right we was a rebuilding state that we had to build so i got to about fema homeland security and then the city of houston but it was only like uh, I'm not going to say only, but it was contract government work. And then sometimes the contract would run out and then, you know, uh, last but not least, so I got laid off, man. So we have to go life and, and, and find out what I do as well as the trucking. And trucking kind of, it really did save us, man. So we blessed. Okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. All right, I want to shout out to everybody that's uh that's joining right now. Attitude, what's going on? Sean Brown, what's going on? Clarence, Mom Deuce Love, what's going on? What's going on? Um, all right, so Ivan, I, I want to stay with you for a second. Uh, you said you was a yeah, you was a homicide detective for how many years? Yeah, fifteen years, and I became uh, I got appointed. To Chief, uh, twice actually in the St. Louis area. Uh, I, was, I, I believe I was the youngest uh, appointed chief in the United States and definitely Missouri. Okay, okay. So, uh, yeah. what happened? If you mind, if you don't mind my asking, what what what? I did, what well, I did, I, oh, I, did 20, I did twenty years, man. Everything everything runs its course, you know. Uh, everything is not meant for a lifetime. I had, you know. I was in dangerous situations all the time. I've seen enough. Uh, all the time. Uh, some of our people, uh, yeah, messed up in the, you know, just messed up, man. I got tired of seeing our people uh, be, become victims of, yeah, I could. I, could. I saved a lot of lives. Uh, I also fought racism that was on the department. Got rid of some of them once I became the boss and all of that. Um, and I just did the best. Like, I did 20 years. So, you know, uh, it was time for me to move on and enjoy the other courses of my life that I so I can enjoy with my family and stuff so you know doing a job like that is very dangerous so I just wanted to enjoy the rest of what I had with my family and just uh kind of carve out a new journey for us and uh we this will let us truck man what was kind of what what was kind of uh what was some situations that you was in if you can if you could speak on I, I say I, I say speak oh, on man. I say speak on maybe one good one and maybe one challenging one uh, all of them was challenging because every day, you know, you don't know what kind of call you're going to, you don't know what you're going to, uh, you know, you don't know what you're going to come up on. Uh, you, I went to college and then, okay, and after leaving college, that, that particular night, I had, I got, man, I ended up finding, uh, uh, this young black male in the, in the alley in the truck, man, he was shot multiple times. Of course he was deceased. And then that's true. I was within five minutes of you know, shit. So yeah, I seen some pre some pre bad stuff. Okay. In other in other situations, to move on from that, mm -hmm. uh, I've helped a lot of people. You know, but you know, people get flat tires. Or somebody might be a victim of a crime. I help them get to safety, or, or just in the heat of uh, of a, a crime. Man, you might have a, a current. You might have a, 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 a shootout between two people. You got to get yourself in the middle of an extension of So yeah. uh, did that did that twenty. Years, man. you you kind of yeah. you Ivan you kind of you, you was kind of breaking up a little bit. Uh, I'm I think you guys got me on uh you guys got me on speaker right. We do. Yeah, that's I I think that's kind of I, I think the speaker is is kind of breaking up because we both actually we both I had to reset earlier y'all I had to reset to make sure that the connection was good between the both of us. <laughs> yeah. So I wasn't sure, you know, like right. I said, he was breaking up a little bit, but I, I think that's because of the speaker and all like that. Sharice, um, what was your feelings uh, 
what what was your what was your life and feelings like like having a having a police or a, a detective for uh for a husband how how did that make you feel on a day to day basis difficult because um he but he loved his job he loved helping the community he loved being um an officer and trying to change the system from within but on the flip side of things as his wife him every single day and unfortunately um it's a very very thankless job like I remember him coming home one day with his hand busted up and you know I'm like what is what happened to your hand he didn't go to the doctor or anything he didn't go to the emergency room and he had broke the fight between seconds fighting over the crack mm. like my husband was sitting there with his hand blowing up <laughs> Him to go to people who were fighting over like a twenty dollar piece of crack. Like to me, he was putting himself in harm's way, and it, it wasn't. It got to a point where the the benefits were outweighing all of the negative things that were happening. Okay, okay, all right. So that's what's up. So that's what's up. So sure. So as, as, as a woman, I understood the passion, and I love the community, but at the same time. Like, these are real people who put themselves in harm's way, and I can't get him back, you know, if somebody does something stupid like that, you know, right. kills him or something like drugs. Right. And that's kind of, and that's kind of messed up, though, for real, for real. I mean, you know, everybody, everybody is, uh, is fighting over, is fighting over that, killing over that, shooting over that. And, you know, and it's sometimes it's just, it's just not worth it, especially for, for, for a police officer. You know what I'm saying? All right. So, uh, um, and you know, the, the biggest thing though, really wasn't even the community because we have people who are struggling with mental illness and things like that. The biggest thing really was the racism from within the department. So my husband, not only had to watch his back on the street, but there were officers, who hated that he was black and he was in charge. So he had to watch. Yeah. And he had to watch his back on both ends and that he was the chief, you know, he was getting rid of racist officers. He had officers who kept doing uh, high speed cases in neighborhoods with kids playing. He had to fire them because they wouldn't stop. It's just so much more that goes into that job than people really understand. Okay, I got you. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. Um, so, so on to you, ma'am. Um, you came from a cellular, Bit Cellular, uh, the biggest cellular company out there. I know is Verizon. <laughs> that's 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 the one I know. That's the one I know. Uh, but be, but coming from that coming from that field. Um, what what was life like for you in that field? Did you did, did, did what? The, be honest with you. What I want to know was your cell phone service free. That's what I want to know. So the cell phone service is fifty percent off. So no, it wasn't free, Boo. but it was highly discounted. Boo. Um, I actually <laughs> I actually credit Verizon with um my the work ethic that I have today. Um I got into the game with them when I was younger, uh, a little bit more immature and I learned a lot about business. I started from the bottom and promoted up, you know, through the the through um different positions inside of the store. I most of my career was in sales. Um but I really I, I enjoyed it. I was able to make money, but when you're in the sales industry you get to a point where sales just you're burnt out on it. So that's you. how I eventually went, moved over into the operations portion of things. And I love that. That was definitely the niche for me. All right. All right. Was, uh, was trucking the reason, uh, was trucking the reason for you guys to migrate down to Houston? That was the reason we migrated down to Houston. Yes. Um, we went, we went to Houston just based off of the fact that, it's a huge city um, um, that the middle class was doing 
an amazing thing, and I had just been laid off, um, and I, I was looking to do something different. Like my husband has, has said it, but he has educated. He has two master's degrees as a teacher. Like, I don't have high school diploma. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You okay? You you going in? You going in and out? <laughs> uh, do me a favor. Take me off. Of, take take me off the speaker and talk into the phone, and see how that works. Okay, you're off now. All right, you talking into the phone? Check check one two one two. We good now? I got you now. That's a lot better. Okay. Yeah. Start all over. <laughs> you was saying so you were saying that you was uh you 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 was going down to Houston because of its diverse city. Okay. Now I lost you. Yeah, just uh when you go down to Houston, you see the Okay. Um we, we, okay, yeah. hold, hold on. We 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 losing connection, and I do not understand hello. why. Hold on for a second. Give me a second. Hello, hello. Hold on, hold on. Give me a second. Uh, well, hey, can connected. can you guys uh can you okay. guys hear her when she's talking? Somebody tell me in the chat right quick if you guys can hear her, hear her when she's talking. Trying to wait for somebody to respond. Okay. Amy Hames. Thank you. Thank you. She said yes. Can you can you hear? She's muting in and out. That's yeah, that's what I'm saying. You know, she's uh she's muting in and out. Okay, okay. Thank you guys. I appreciate it. Uh hold on for a second. Let me let me let me try something. Give me one second. Hold on for a second. All right, uh, guys. All right, I'm looking at my, I'm looking at my, uh, I'm looking at my thing over there on the side, and it keeps going. I, I see where the problem might be. So, give me one more second, and I'll give you a call right back to reset the, uh, to reset the router. All right. Hang tight. Let me give you okay. a call. Right, right, no right. problem. Hang up. All right, guys. I am resetting the router right quick so I can call her right back. Hopefully. Hopefully we can we 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 can uh we we can we can muster through this. Hopefully we can muster. How through we this. doing? There we go. Oh, you sound a hell of a lot better. Oh my god. See, you were trying to blame it on me. Oh my Let god, me you see. sound like a you sound like an angel. Just the lock, angel. Lock out, man. You trying to lock us out, man? I'm not, I, I'm trying to keep I'm I'm trying to keep y'all in. I'm trying to keep y'all in, man. <laughs> I mean, my my you know, like I said, I. The area, the area where I'm at is pretty is is pretty decent. That was another reason why, you know, I wanted us to, you know, you you wanted us to not move because the bars go up and down. But as of right now, yeah. it's, as as of right now, it's pretty good. And yeah, you guys is coming in awesome. All right, all right. So let's let's move on. Okay, so you just yeah. you guys decided together to get into trucking. What was the what was the inspiration? What was the move? that you guys made to get into trucking? Uh, we were left. Uh, after going through everything with Harvey and then uh, me getting laid off and stuff like that, uh, we actually didn't have a, we didn't have any options. So uh, I believe that, you know, God put that, put it right for us. I was already thinking about trucking. She didn't know that. And we can, we came to get, she said, man, you know what? I've been thinking about trucking. I say, what? I've been I've been thinking, I've been looking up on this thing for about a year. So we finally put our heads together, and made something happen. Uh, my initial road was over to TRST. That's where I initially started at. And then I started at Prime. 
And All that's right. the whole story. And it wasn't and that and there wasn't even the plan, man. It just, it's just a whole nother story when it comes it comes down to something with a drug test. So and so that's why I ended up going with C R S T first because that's just, just a whole nother story. You All know? right. So you, you wanna so, hear it? You so, wanna hear it? So hold on. You 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 sh- am I pronouncing I, I I hate beating people's name up. Sharice, right? Sure, sure. Sure. Yeah. Okay. You went to Prime. And yes. Ivan, you went to CRST as far as going to get your license, right? Right. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Going through the school. Yeah. Uh-huh. All right. So the plan was you... for us both to go to Prime. Oh, okay. But let me ask you this: Did you guys? Did you guys research? Uh, did you guys research like regular trucking schools? Was there was there a reason why you guys opt? Opt out of the opt uh, opt out of not going to the regular trucking school, then going to a trucking company to go to school through them. Yes, I'm going to be honest. When when he said we didn't have a choice but to go into trucking, we didn't have a choice. Like financially, we wouldn't have been able to afford going to trucking school. Oh, okay, and to keep you know feeding our kids, so oh, okay. <laughs> we okay. had to make a choice to keep what little savings we had. And use that while we were completing truck school. Okay, 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 okay. All right, so let's start with Ivan, man. So CRST, man. What, what was the what was the experience over there, man? Uh, I could say they 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 truck academy was I, I what I've heard, seen in, in publication. I heard they got the third, the second best trucking academy in the in the country. What do you it's think? Called NADA. I think it's uh, I, I believe it's oh man, they fast track you. Uh, so you got to learn really quick there. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it was, I think it was an awesome experience. I, I really do. Um, only experience I didn't like is the dorm. They had you set up with three or two other people in your room. You know, I'm kind of, you know, guys don't like to be around the guys like that. Uh, I mean, it seemed like a boot camp situation where you had to be. I had that was cool. There was some African dudes, one from Nigeria, one from, uh, uh, what's the place? Uh, Sudan. And they was cool, man. It actually was a good experience with that. But I, I didn't prefer it. But once I got to know, we got to know each other. It was all good. Now, you know, uh, me personally, the meals, personally, I, I'm uh-huh. I'm not a fan of that. I, I'm not a fan of that. Me no, I, I'm not a fan right. of that. I, I need I, I need to go to the uh, I, I need to go to the uh, to the hotel solo by myself. Yeah. Walk around naked. Wash. Right. Shower naked, yeah. lay in the bed naked. Sure. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And not worried. Yourself. You know, yeah. not not worried about not worried about nobody else being in the room and trying to you know, yeah, trying to fight over the TV and shit like that, man. But you know, you but you said it was, sure. but yeah. you said it was, uh, but you said it was cool though. Uh, how how long was, yeah. how, how long was how long was it? You know, plus you said there was a dorm, like an academy, like a like like a college or some shit like that what the fuck it was a it, it's an old it's actually an old women's jail i heard and they just made it look like a hotel so to speak it's almost like you take a it looked like a motel six but they put crst on the thing right there man you know what i'm saying on that sign i mean they did it up pretty good but it's just the fact you and the, you and the, you you almost like a teller you want to stay with two other cats. You know what I'm saying? So uh-huh. I wasn't really feeling it. Uh, but I think it worked out the way it's supposed to work out. Because, man, like I said, I had two Africans in there, one from Sudan, one from Nigeria. I ended up helping them get through school, man. So I feel really good about that. Wow. Because it was a language barrier right. and everything. So the notes, that I, the, the notes that I had from me going to class, I was able to help them out with what I had. Because I was, I was there first before them. I felt good that I was able to help them push them on through, man. Wow. <laughs> That's crazy. Yep. That's crazy. Yeah. All right. So um yeah. so you let's fa- let's let's fast track going through the uh through the uh, school. So you, obviously you got your CDLs. Uh did you have to sign yeah. like a contract or something like that? Did you did you was you un- uh, up under obligation to fulfill the contract? Or is or did you or was uh, it financed? I know what you're saying. Yeah, they uh they had a contract, man. They they, I, they feel like I'm obligated to them, but I ain't. You right. Know what I'm saying so, exactly. Uh, exactly. You know, 
my obligations, my obligations to myself and my family for us to bet ourselves. So ain't nobody gonna hold no contract over me. I don't care what it is, you know, so far as they go. Exactly. Them. And then they was getting over on a lot of people, man, with the money situation. So I had to bounce, you know. What was it, the, what was the money? Up, well, how, how much how much being a new driver and all like that? Because I know you had to go out with a trainer, and during training you get paid different than actually going out solo. So during training, how much you got? Yeah. How much you got paid during training? I ain't gonna even lie to you, man. To me, the money I was used to making before, and and then I was doing that. It was you know. It was like four fifty a week, maybe four hundred, sometimes three fifty. It was terrible, man. Yeah. It was terrible. But that's what I was you trying know, to tell. That's what I was trying. That's what I was trying to tell people. Like when they come in and they think they're going to be making that bit money right off the bat and all like that. But nah. you, but the first four weeks, first five weeks, and in in prime uh, situation, yeah. which we will get to in a minute, in prime situation, you got to go a little bit longer than that, and you only making yeah. Yep. Four, you only making four fifty five. I made seven hundred and fifty dollars for four weeks. Yes, you see what I'm saying. Yeah, I mean it was semi. My wife was making more. Right. My wife was making more on training than in, in training at Prime than I was. You know what I'm saying? Drive where I was. She was helping me. She was sending me money to help me to get through the week, man. Wow, that's not crazy. What? Boy. No, man. Thing. No, man. Like that, no. Man. no. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. So I had to bounce on back. Sharice, you had to you had to you you had to you had to send money. You had to cash app him some money. Yeah. One team one dream. And then like I said, we do have kids. We got kids. So it, it, uh, was, it was a situation. Like we're a Brady bunch, so all of our children have other biological parents outside of us. We got five kids, man. But like when we were telling them we don't have no money, they looking at us like, "Yeah, right." Like, You're, no, a really You're a truck driver. <laughs> You're a truck driver. You're a truck driver. That's what you, they thought. But You're a truck driver. A truck driving You're and training have, is, is you supposed to have some money. Ain't, ain't that a ain't, truck driving and training is living under the poverty line? Uh, ain't, but but ain't that what a, a, a Ivan? Ain't 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 that what the females? Not 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 you now. Not not you, Sharice. But ain't that what the females see? You're a truck driver. You got money. And when you turn around and tell yeah, them. Yeah, they think. They, you tell them. Yeah. You tell they them. Think, yeah, they think it's a nice little lick. They think it's a nice little lick. Oh, he got that bag. Nah, everybody everybody ain't got that bag. Sometimes you just got to go out there and, you know, CRST, man, you got to walk through that swamp. You ain't getting paid. Man, I'll be looking at some of the drivers. I'm not. I know some of them probably making some money. And I ain't really knocking CRST. But what I'm saying is, hey, you people. Pay your people, man. They out there. Pay your people. They out here risking our life. Pay your people. Pay your, pay your people. people, man. All right. So, yeah, so you, you know? so what was what was the uh, what was the experience training wise? I mean, what, did you had a good trainer? Did uh, you get through the training, or what, what was what was up? Yeah, with everything that? was good. Yeah, everything was good. I ain't had no bad experience. I had no bad experience. I, you know, uh, my training was he was he was awesome. That's all I can say. You know, right, it, so. it got me from one point to the next. And I knew where I was going. I knew where I was at. I knew where I was going. I knew where I was going to get there. I knew I had to come back home to prime. There you go. There you go. So how long you was with uh, CRST before you left? Oh, man. I was out there in the month. I was gone. As soon as I got my... <laughs> I got my feet in the air, brother. I was down. <laughs> I hit, hey, I hit that gas. I hit that gas on him. I ain't going to even lie to you. I was gone. You say you was gone, huh? Gone, man. Man. He had checks after he had upgraded from training to the truck with his uh, co-driver that uh -huh. was less than his training check. Uh, that, oh, that was it. Yeah. So did, did, did CRST <laughs> try to... Try to ball or block you. They, 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 they trying to stop you from going anywhere else. Nah, you can't stop nobody who's determined. Oh, okay. You know, I had a plan. I knew how to get up out of there. That's you what's know what I'm up. I say, well, if the house is on fire. I know which window or door I'm go out of. That's I had already up. planned this out in case they start tripping with the bread anyway. So there you, you go. Know, there that's you how go. I did that. That's now what up. happened? I was already. I was supposed to have one with Prime the first time, but it was a. You know, they had you take the drug test. I don't smoke weed or nothing like that. Now I'm not right. nobody who does. Right. So but what happened? What happened I, with that? I, okay. I took my drug test and uh, I had, you know, you got you to gotta pee in, in, in a cup. Well, 
at this particular site that I went to, uh, the medical facility I went to the beach, they wanted a whole bunch. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like a whole cup. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So, and I have, I, I had surgery, man. I had got shot. So, uh, my surgery, I have, a, I have a, what you call a medical term is a shy bladder. So, uh, due to my shy bladder, I can't pee as much or as much, you know, as much as many people, as most people can. So they counted it as a refusal. But medically, it's a shy bladder. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. I had to go through red tape and go back to oncology. I mean, go back to the doctor and uh, get a get a note from them and say, hey, this guy wasn't refusing the test. He just has a medical issue with urinating as much as most people. Right. So once I submitted that, I was able to come on back over the front. That's all it was. But it kept, it kept me away from my wife for like a whole month. It kept us separated. Just that little mishap kept us separated. And I never left the medical office. Like I was trying to hide or anything, or leave. I stayed there for the whole four hours, mm -hmm. and I, I attempted three times to pee in the cup. And every time I got up on right up under that line, okay, so I had to go back and get my little note. Yeah, so I was able to come back to prime. It just took I had to go through some red tape. Okay, so wait, so so you 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 went to you went to take the drug test, and they was tripping out on how much you actually pissed in the cup. They yeah. was trying the to. Lab. They was yeah, trying. They they lab. was trying to. They was trying to. They was trying to give you a refusal because now you gotta, you you gotta register for the uh, clearinghouse thing. So if you refuse, flunk, or fail a drug test, it's gonna be on your record. So what they was trying to do, they was right. trying to mess you up by, by by saying that you refuse because you couldn't you you couldn't give enough piss in the cup. I, it, that's what it. That's what it. The, the, the picture looked like it was painted, man. Uh, it just, you know, I, I didn't. You know, what I'm saying they could have tested what I had right there and say, "Damn, this right. he don't do coke. He don't do this. He don't do that." Like I stayed at the office. It ain't like I ran out the office. Like, damn, I can't be. I'm gone. No, I stayed there for the four hours and attempted three times. So they should have known. Hey, man, something up. You know what I'm saying? This guy ain't trying to hide that. Right. But so I end up. So I ended up going with CRST, so I get my thing, and I came on back, man. Oh, so I okay. made it. I made it. I had, had to go through some red tape, but I had to be disciplined. It was hard, but I had to be disciplined. I came on back. Okay. But it looked like that's what they were trying to say. Yeah. Okay, 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 okay. So, Cherie, you went over you over at Prime. What was your experience Correct. over there? <laughs> I, it was stressful. Like, I will never say that I enjoyed training. I know that it's necessary, um, but I'm a very private person. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, it, it was just hard to have to share. Like, as soon as I got there, I had a roommate. Um, I didn't know I was going to have a roommate. Um, it, it was just difficult being on those trucks with the trainers. I will say that Prime has a good training program as far as the material as far as what we learn, for me, it was just the longevity that was stressful for, for my personality. Okay, so you so you came you 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 came into the school. Uh, you uh, you said you was you 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 was in the, in a in a room. So Prime has has something like uh, CRST too. They they have like a like a an academy. Uh, an academy place where you guys stay at? So it's actually a motel that they purchased. Oh, okay. um, they call it Campus Inn. Okay. Um, the facilities, five I mean, star. <laughs> I five just said five star, star compared to CRST. Five star. <laughs> I guess five star anyway. I mean, they feed you. They feed you. It's good food. Um, it's a clean environment. You know, you get a shower every day. Mm -hmm. um, we work out with the CEO. We work out with the, we work out with, uh, with the CEO that owns the company. We see him. Play like, basketball? Yeah, we play basketball with him. He's a billionaire. We we, we can stand next to this guy. Mm -hmm. And I've already had, like, radio interviews with him on TV and stuff like that. Like, he's a really cool guy, man. Thanks to Rob Lowe. I love to him. I appreciate the opportunity. Uh, just a great guy, man. We got, full, you know, the facility. We got basketball, a full-fledged basketball court. We got workout facilities, treadmill, everything you you can think of. A full fledged kitchen. We got uh, now if we got Prime, a store. If if Prime is doing it big 
like that, then why the <laughs> hell, why the hell they got so piss poor uh, trainers with, uh, with the exception of a few? I think it's a personality thing. I think a certain type of personality might be attracted to training because you have to be a different kind of person to allow somebody to drive you around while you're sleeping that just started driving trucks. Mm-hmm. And some people just want to control. They want to, some people just love control. So they, I believe some people become trainers because they just want to control uh, somebody or be over somebody. And, and that- some people generally want to help people. Yeah. Just like it's, it's, you have different trainers because you got just like in regular life, you got good and bad people. Mm-hmm. So some of these trainers are some of them are good people, some of them are bad people. Some, yeah. some of them have bad habits, some of them have good habits, you know. And I think enough people don't complain. Like Prime can't do anything about a bad trainer if they're not told. And so many of us are in trucking as a last resort. Like we have nothing to fall back on if trucking falls through. So I think that there's sometimes people that take more off of people than they should because they just want to get to upgrading to get their own truck. Yeah. Okay. And if Prime doesn't know, they can't fix it. Right, right. Okay. And, and okay. to my female drivers out there, if y'all if y'all feel like uh, you know, your trainer is being, you know, too sexual with you or whatever, hey, report it. You know what I'm saying? Report it. If I agree. Girls, your boyfriend or whatever, you feel uncomfortable, report that. You won't get in trouble for that. The company should should be able to back. I know Prime does. Prime definitely does. So they don't play. They yeah. can't. They pull you off immediately. Yeah. And if you are being sexually intimidated or assaulted and you don't say anything, you're putting the next woman in a bad situation. Mm-hmm. That's what's up. So so. But I didn't have that experience. <laughs> you say you didn't have that experience. That's what's up. I have to give you a no. round of applause <laughs> for that. You didn't have that uh, had that bad experience. So how long was how how long was the train how long was the train and I know it's like what fifty thousand fifty thousand miles so what's that in months? So my training lasted from let's see <laughs> it lasted four months for me. That's um time. it was fifty thousand miles mm-hmm. um for me. Um, I ended up having to do an additional 10,000 miles. What happened? I had a hard stop. <laughs> I had a hard stop. Are you somebody, serious? Somebody uh, popped out. Yeah. Somebody popped out in front of me, uh, came from like the middle lane all the way over to the off ramp. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I, I panicked and hard stop to keep from hitting them. And I probably could have gotten away without doing that hard stop, but I was new. And I was just afraid to, you know, hit somebody. And they gave, and they told you you had to stay out with that particular trainer for another ten thousand miles. How how much? How yeah. much? How much? How long does that equate into like weeks or months? Typically about two weeks. Um, I had uh, a good. I had good trainers. We typically did at least five thousand a, a week. You know, I was tired. We ran hard. I made them a lot of money. <laughs> But typically about two weeks for ten thousand so, miles. So this was a so this was a lease driver, not a company driver that was training. Yeah, I had more than one trainer throughout the time uh, in Whoa. TNT. They were all lease drivers. Was was that was that well, my, 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 was that by choice that you had many TNT drivers during the TNT phase? Or my uh, main trainer, he completed his lease. So he had to give the truck back, and he had some pre-scheduled vacation at the end of his lease. So I had to get another trainer to wrap up my last, what, 20,000 miles or so. For the people yeah, that they were lease drivers. For the people that don't know what TNT is, let, let them know what TNT means. Um, shoot, I don't even know. What does it stand for? But, I mean, it, it's, it's the training that you do after you get your, your CDL yeah. to teach you ex- actually how to drive a truck in all conditions what the field would be like how to bag and weather conditions uh different parts of the country they teach you all aspects of uh trucking basically okay. uh, for, for, for a period of time okay. also how to run your truck yeah. too like paperwork and bill of ladings and trip sheets and all of that stuff okay okay we so, love it though man. so we, you 
so so you didn't so you came out came out of it you you pretty much trifecta out of it and you didn't have no no issues doing your training time at prime yeah i mean you know there, there was the you know I, I i always thought of myself as being this independent woman but being away from my husband really got to me so for me it was more of the emotional aspect of um keeping my eye on the prize and not letting, you know, being away from family, being away from my husband affect me to the point where I couldn't complete the task at hand. Okay. Okay. So both of y'all, so both of y'all at prime now, y'all both drive for prime oh, yeah, now. We, uh, yeah, we, we are at least owners, man. We got our own businesses, partnership with prime. Uh, they basically kind of dispatch us, uh, to, you know, go get the money. And uh, we either say yay or nay. Either we either we gonna go there or we not. Uh, was you so was we you, have that option as we come. Was you was you talked into it because you guys just really got into into the truck and now y'all you know like lease operators now. Uh, was no, y'all was no, y'all talked in? Was y'all talked talk. into it? Not at all. We had we already knew we wanted to uh, kind of be have control over our over our business. Uh, with Prime, so you know we want to have at least a little bit of leeway. To say, hey, we we going here or we not going here? With company, you can't do that. You got to go for the most part. And, uh, okay. and then too, the money was the difference too. Yeah, you make more um, money. At least. You know, I won't say specifically how much we make, but I was able to see from the people that I met that were company, and from like I, my lease, my lease trainers showed me the tech. Mm -hmm. They showed me their settlement. They showed me what was being deposited into the, the, their bank account, um, running teams with me. And so I, I knew from seeing their bank, their settlement, and seeing what I would have, like when you compare cents per mile mm -hmm. to what it is he's getting paid on this particular load, you see that, okay, this is outweighing that, even with the truck payment. And prime, prime company drivers are making some decent money. I ain't going to even lie to you, but with the lease, Okay, you can double that. You can double that. You know what I'm saying? You can you could pretty much double what the companies the company drivers are making. And they making pretty they making some decent money. But you could put you can times that times two when you lease. All right. And you're on your you have more control over where you can go. All right, so uh, Jeremy Griggs just uh popped in and he says that Prime wants fourteen hundred dollars a week to rent a truck. I don't believe I, I don't I, I don't think that's 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 quite right, uh, Jeremy. What what you guys paying for? It paying depends for on your truck. Okay, it depends. Most of most people are averaging around around twelve, around twelve hundred a month for the truck. Oh oh, a month? No, not not how oh, much? No no no, no 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 no. Now how much you now how much you getting paid? How much you guys paying for the truck a week? How, how much do you guys That's pay? That's what I'm saying. Okay, so a week, you guys, you guys paying about twelve hundred dollars a week for the truck. So, on average, most lease pay lease uh leases are paying somewhere around twelve hundred dollars a month. We aren't. We have a little bit less expensive truck. We're driving international, so our cost a little less. It's but it's a 2020, uh, but so we're around 1100 a week. So, so yeah. you guys pay every week 1100 dollars a week. Yep. Okay. Okay. And what I'm telling you is, we don't, we don't even, we don't even sell it. That's how much money is being made in the lease program here, at least with our situation, because we don't even, we don't even feel feel that that, that stress. You know what I'm saying? So if it's eleven hundred dollars, we ain't tripping. That lets you kind of get put you in the ballpark. Like, hey, they, they, you know, what I'm saying they must be doing pretty decent. But this you is, know, but this not is even really. Familiar. But is this? But let me ask you. Let me ask you guys this: Is this lease to own, or or a a a lease op? You know what I mean? And what I mean by a lease op is that you guys just it's like what Jeremy says. You guys just renting the truck. Until you guys decide yeah, to, so, oh, go ahead. Yeah, we're in the lease, uh, the lease operator program. 
Okay, so... So at the end of the lease, you can choose to take your bonus or you can choose to flip it into purchasing the truck if you'd like to. I don't know the details of that. So, you know, because we're not going to buy this particular truck. Okay. Um, however, yeah, we're, we're lease out. Okay, okay, okay. I got you. 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 All right, all right. Well, man, uh, it sounds like you guys found a uh, found a good home with uh with Prime. Uh, sounds like Prime is uh is is uh treating you well. Uh, you guys have any uh is, is you guys have any aspirations to uh buy the truck or or buy a truck? And stick it out with Prime, or you guys so, have other plans? So we definitely um, are going to be looking into financing a truck. Um, we aren't sure yet whether we're just going to outright purchase a used truck from Prime. Because if, if you've ever worked for Prime, you know that Prime takes care of their truck. Yeah, they do. not run through one of the terminals without them looking over every detail of the truck and making sure it's in tip-top condition. Right. So um, I will say their used trucks cost a little bit more, but I'm, we're confident in what we're getting if we buy a used truck from them. Okay. Um, but we also are going to look on some lots. But, you know, we have to make sure whatever truck we get uh, fits prime specifications because, I mean, we have a good home here. Okay. We, we are really being taken care of. Um, I have nothing bad to say about prime. At all. Great partnership. Would he? Would you say, Ivan? I say they're a great partnership. We we have great partnership with Prime. I mean, they they've allowed us to basically kind of own our own business. Because when when you're a lease operator, you have to have your own LLC, and uh, it's just been a great partnership. They're going to help us and allow us to grow. And the door is already open for. Them. We're working on that as we speak. Uh, so we're going to have more to talk about in the future, and probably. More than likely, going to be able to hire two to four drivers here, hopefully within the next year. If not, that's, if not shorter than that, so that's goals. Yeah, yeah I'm that's goals right there. Yes, sir. Yeah. That's goals right yes, there. Yes, sir. Prime micro fleet program. <laughs> yeah, that's goals right there, man. That's goals. I hear that. Uh, before we get up out of here, Jeremy Grizz says uh, that he he feels that Prime is a uh, is terrible. He said, how you make money with a payment like that? That's that's why the owner is a billionaire. I mean, when you think about it, that when you look at it that way, yeah. I mean, you know, the owner is a billionaire because you guys is paying that extravagant amount just to rent the truck and not uh and not to buy the truck. But you guys have plans. Hey. You guys have plans, yeah, and I'm sure you guys are gonna, yeah. you know, put it in motion so that you you will yeah. be billionaires instead of making the billionaire more money than what it is. Yeah, it's already gonna happen, like oh man, and I mean, being a lease operator owner, uh, it's just like being a franchise. You know what I'm saying? Everybody ain't missing McDonald's, but you have certain people that own McDonald's and they franchise in the business. It's the same exact situation, and it's how you. It's how you uh, set up your situation. It's how you save your money. It's what you do with your money, and, and then if you get if you have, if you have this stream of income, you can do some other things and let them have other streams of income. So it's different ways of growing uh, with your business, and that's what we are. We're basically kind of franchisees, and we, so we looking to expand. Usually, franchisees are looking to expand. That's what we're doing. That's where we're going, and, and that's how we're gonna get there. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. Uh, how do the fan? How, now you said. Now you guys mentioned that you guys got five kids. Uh, how how do the family? Yeah. How, how's the family now? Do they stand behind you on your uh, decision to go into trucking? Yeah, a hundred percent. I mean, it definitely was a little bit of shock to them. Adults, you know. Um, what? And then we have some teenagers. The baby is um eleven years old. Um, okay. she's literally just got off the truck with us. She's been riding around with us, but they're all supportive. And also, um, you know, it, this is one of the reasons why you always want to make sure when you have a child with somebody that you guys keep a good friendship, a good relationship, because, uh, the, our, the other parents of our children have really been 
a lifesaver for us. They've helped us leave all partners together to keep the kids, you know, happy and safe and healthy um, because it was a struggle for a minute. But it was like one team, one dream. If this is what y'all want to do, we'll be there to support y'all. And that's uh, my daughter's father in Vegas or his his children's mom in St. Louis. Everybody just really helped out. Very supportive. Yeah.